So majority wanted me to do another response about video game protagonists and basically if you watch my previous video on Grandia 2 then you'll have pretty much known my answer when it comes to my favourite video game protagonist but I'm going to touch on the question itself because the question says what makes video game protagonists effective and really I think for me the most important thing for a video game protagonist is to not be a predefined character and not be a silent protagonist that we don't make. It has to be a character that we create and that's why I find character creation so important in games. If you're going to have a silent protagonist then you better have a character creation tool because I want that character to be who I want. I want them to look the way I want them to. I want them to act the way I want them to. I want them to be who I want. And very few games do this well enough for me to really say that character creation is everything because it's not. There's a lot more to it than just being able to create the characters themselves. You have to have agency in the game to truly personalize your character and make decisions and impact the world. The only game that manages to do that is Mountain Blade Warband and Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord which if you're looking at the footage here you'll see me playing as my created character and his name is Skalgrim not to be confused with the YouTube channel which has a similar name to it but basically it's a simple character I don't plan on using this character much because this was just my test character for the early access and I just wanted to make him a warrior who was also a blacksmith and there wasn't really too much to his character really but I wanted him to be a specific type of character I didn't want him to be like someone who goes pillaging villages or anything like that and he has yet to pillage a single village so yeah I wanted him to be a sort of good character but I didn't really care too much about being good I just wanted to be somewhat good and yeah that's basically the gist of it but what's important about it to me is just being able to do what I want because I think that one of the problems with games that focus on narrative is that not every character is going to be a character that you're going to relate to. Not every character is going to be a character that you enjoy. And for that reason, being able to create a character and personalise that character to be who you want to be is very important to me because that way I can make my idealised character. Now, I'm not saying that it's wrong to have predefined characters. I mean, as I say, Ryudo from Grandia 2 is a predefined character that I like, but characters like Ryudo are very few and far between. Many protagonists in JRPGs especially are just really generic, heroic characters who are always nice and righteous and pure, and I'm just not into that. But the best example of a video game protagonist, or I should say duo of characters that just do absolutely nothing for me, are uh, Estelle and Joshua from The Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky games. Those two characters bore me to death, mainly because they're just a couple of goody two-shoes, you know? They're the opposite of Ryudo. Like, they're always trying to help people and do the right thing and do good stuff. They're trying to be goody-goody all the time, and that's kind of obnoxious to me. I hate characters that are just goody-goody all the time. Yeah, I hate that sort of thing. And Ryudo is the opposite. He's an arsehole, but that's why I like him because he doesn't put up with bullshit and he's always speaking his mind on shit and that's why I like him but I don't like Estelle and Joshua and yeah like there's actually one scene in Legend of Heroes Trails in the Sky where this rich noble causes you trouble and basically someone offers you money as compensation for putting up with that rich noble's antics and Estelle and Joshua refuse the money which to me that's bullshit if I got offered money for putting up with that rich guy's bullshit, I would take that money straight away. Now, Ryudo has a scene in Grandia 2 where he has to do this minigame and he has to basically do this thing for the beast men people. And at the end, they offer him a reward. And if Ryudo completes the minigame, then he gets the reward. If he doesn't complete the minigame, then Elena will say, you don't deserve it because you didn't finish the minigame. And Ryudo has a comment saying, Money doesn't grow on trees, princess. You take what you can get in this world. If someone offers you something, you take it. 
you know, and that's what I like about Udo, and that's what I would do in that situation. You know, if someone offered me money or whatever, I would take it, because money doesn't come for free. You know, you can be as goody-goody as you want, but it doesn't mean the world's going to give to you for it. I mean, some people are, but some people aren't. But if someone does give to you, you take it, and that's always been my way, you know? It might sound selfish, but at the end of the day, I just feel that that's the sort of character I prefer. Because, quite frankly, that's just how I would be in a situation like that. So, yeah, that's basically the gist of it. I mean, ultimately, it, it's all subjective. You can't have a character that appeals to everyone. I mean, as I say, Ryudo's a good character. There are some interesting characters that do a good job at portraying a certain character, but I personally don't relate to them. Characters like, for example... Capel from Infinite Undiscovery are really good, but I don't relate to them, if that makes sense. Maybe I somewhat relate to them, but not completely, you know what I mean? And it's always going to be like that. And I think when it comes to connectivity, having a little bit of relatability can help, but it's not completely necessary. Whereas when it comes to immersion, it is. You have to have a character that is 100% who you want to be. You know, you have to have an avatar that you want to play as so that you can put yourself in the world. And if you're not putting yourself in the world, then you're not being immersed because you are not really in control over your own decisions. And if you're not in control over your own decisions, then how can you have any deep immersion in a world? Because you're clearly not there. You're not a part of it. Whereas connection is where you know that you're not a part of the world and you willingly connect to the world's characters so that you can experience something. But you're not a part of it. Yeah, sure, you pick, like, what abilities you want to do in battle, but that's not you performing the attack. Baton Kytos does a fantastic job of showing this through the whole Guardian Spirit thing where you don't actually play as any of the characters that you see in the game. You play as the guardian spirit and your job is to basically just watch over these characters and pretty much the game just breaks the fourth wall and just calls you out and says you're not any of us, you're none of us, you're just this entity that watches over us. And I thought that was a really cool idea but like I say when it comes to protagonists and immersion you need to be whoever you want to be. You need to have a created character with the agency to make decisions. And the only game that ever does that is Mountain Blade. And that's why it's the most immersive game I've ever played and probably will ever play. So yeah, that's basically the gist of it. I mean, I could go into more detail on protagonists that I hate, like Emil from Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World and Zidane from Final Fantasy IX, who I absolutely despise, which is probably why I hate Final Fantasy IX and Tales of Symphonia Dawn of the New World, because the protagonists of both games are obnoxious as hell. Like, I cannot stand Zidane from Final Fantasy IX because he's an idiot. He's a freaking arrogant douchebag who's so pretentious and patronising to everyone around him, you know? He just bothers me. Like, he just meddles in everybody's affairs and makes out that he's better than he actually is. And the moment that he... You know, he's always trying to help other people out just to bolster his ego. But the moment that he needs help, he rejects it because he can't handle the fact that he has to rely on others. And that really bothers me because it shows me that he has an ego that's blocking him from accepting help. Because he just thinks he's better than everybody else. And I fucking hate characters like that. There's no way I can relate to a character like Zidane. No way. He's just an idiot. He's the character that I want to punch in the face, repeatedly. That's all he is to me. And then there's Emil from Tales of Symphonia, Dawn of the New World, who's just a, he, who's just a pussy and has no spine whatsoever. It's like, come on, you know, it's not that hard to just, like, play the hero role. Like, come on now, I mean, it's not that big of a deal, you know? Like, I get that killing monsters isn't as easy as these games make them out to be, but come on, at least act somewhat heroic, or try to be heroic, you know? At least try to be likeable, you know? I think it's very important for games to make the characters something that players want to be, you know? You want to make the characters cool and appealing, and you want to make players want to be that character. That's the whole point. If the character is someone that you don't want to be, then 
you're just basically pushing players through an annoying experience where they have to play as this character that they cannot stand, you know? They might as well just play something where they play as themselves because in many cases playing as themselves would probably be better because their own personality would probably be better than the character that they have to play as. But yeah, anyways, that's pretty much all I have to say on this, so yeah, see you guys.